guys, this is Romy here. Welcome back to our life, Baxter, Baxter DLC. We're here for drinks. It was late enough in the day that we were surprised to hear a knock on the door. Seeing who was waiting on the other side only doubled, to, the, only doubled the surprise. Good evening, Michiko. I've returned from my journey. Where have you been? <laughs> Baxter smiled, warned like it was still the middle of the afternoon. The confusion must have been written all over your face. He laughed as if he could read your thoughts. It was almost a week ago that you found Baxter in the same exact spot. You spun a tale about how you put, put in place some plans to visit old acquaintances in Northern California after his parents had told him they were sending him to Sunset Bird. Baxter assumed he being in the same statement that he was reasonably close for a visit, but he learned the hard way how daunting it would be to drive himself to the opposite end of California. Before he left, Baxter ended that conversation with a promise. On his return, he would tell you of the arrival in person, and there he was, true to his word. Aww. Nice to see you. It's lovely to see you again. I feel I've been away for eight for an age. Oh my god, what's gonna happen when we break up? That arrangement had seemed like a stroke of brilliance, adding more adventure to my stay in the state and assuring myself I'd see friendly faces at least once in the season. Yet truthfully, I wouldn't have promised such a lengthy trip away from town if I had known who my neighbor was going to be. Oh. As pleasant as they were, it simply doesn't co <laughs> compare to what I have here. I missed you. I hope you still had fun. Well, I'm so flattered you teased. You know, I don't mind if you have other things you'd rather do sometimes. I missed you. Stunned, Baxter stopped talking. You beat him to the punch, but his surprise quickly morphed into pure delight. I missed you. Aww, cute. The important thing else, he let Baxter actually come in. He had quarter quarterly joined you in the family living room. With the greetings and pleasantries all done and an invitation to talk extended, he got right to the point, as you would have expected from him. I hope I'm not being too forward. But I would like to spend more time with you. In fact, I was wondering if I might take you on a date. I spoke so boldly about the, that desire before, and it's long overdue. <sighs> Finally, a man that just actually says and does what he wants. <laughs> the air caught, got caught in your throat. A part of you knew that it was silly to get so tripped up in Baxter's confidence, but you couldn't hold back your reaction. And that's what you also want, of course. I've, I've been waiting for this. I do. I was hoping that could happen too. Just had to be called a date. You nodded in full agreement. Your heart leapt for joy, and that excitement was reflected in your smile. I'm thrilled to see that. And obviously, this sense of date would be based on your own schedule. It'd be ghastly if I expected you to drop everything simply because I've only now made myself available. Whatever works best for you, I'll accommodate accordingly. It is late today, so I don't expect that, but I am entirely free tomorrow. I have a family thing tomorrow afternoon, and I probably won't be back until late. I'm sorry. You started shaking your head. Baxter's expression became indecipherable. But we could do something in the morning, as long as you don't mind it being kind of short. Oh, he looks... He looks bummed out. <laughs> He placed a suggestion, hopefully. It seemed like it'd be a good compromise, but it was hard to tell what Baxter thought. He stood there silently. The look on his face changed. It was strange. There was a problem, certainly. But if he was free and so were you, what could be that much of a roadblock? I think he wants this whole day together, right? We can hang out some other day if that's not what you had in mind. <laughs> his expression shifted again and not for the better. Whatever caught him off guard in the first place was nothing in comparison. Baxter was getting even more perturbed. Um, and just as quickly Baxter snapped out of it, he released a steady breath and regained much of his usual relaxed composure with his next inhale. I apologize. Forgive me for being distracted. Your idea is perfectly manageable. More than more than that, in fact. I'd prefer if we didn't put things off another day. How about we go to a cafe and get coffee or tea or whatever drink you prefer? I've been I've seen some crazy oh, sorry, crazy. I've seen some very nice ones when I've been out exploring the area, but I haven't patronized any of them yet. Okay. That'd be nice. Excellent. Tomorrow morning it is, then. What were all those expressions he was making? I, I feel like he wants a whole day with us, you know? Because he missed us. And hearing that we can only be available in the morning, uh, he probably was like, damn. But fuck. All right, I guess. <laughs> it was always going to be a busy day, but at least now tomorrow I had an added dash of an excitement. The anticipation was mutual and Baxter's tone swinged. You got all the details squared away. Baxter volunteered to play driver for the short trip, and you plan to drop by his house in the morning once you've gotten ready. When that was settled, there's nothing left to do other than say your goodbyes for the night. Baxter politely dipped his head. Bye. Have a good night. Goodbye for today. You as well. I'll see you soon, Michiko. As you turned to go, you both found a little ways to stretch a second, lingering for as long as you could. Then he was gone. The rest of the night passed pleasantly. Your thoughts wandered along all the fun paths tomorrow could unfold in. 
The next morning, you were up and out the door like a whirlwind. Your eyes were set on your goal as you went up the hill and crossed the street to Baxter's condo. Knocking on the door, you tried to guess the cafe Baxter had in mind. He had mentioned before that there were a few that caught his eye, but you weren't sure what that meant exactly. Your growing curiosity wouldn't have had to wait much longer. Or maybe it would. As soon as you stood in front of Baxter's shut condo, you gradually realized it was taking quite a while for him to answer the door. Much more than was normal. Is he not a morning person? <laughs> Blinking your head scolded as you double checked for your own sanity that you, been, you had the right house. You did, but Baxter was still nowhere to be seen. You rang the doorbell next. A couple minutes passed and you finally began to hear a faint clatter inside the house. The doors pulled open a crack as barely enough to see Baxter on their side, wearing half lidded days and not his usual outfit, that was for sure. Um... Yeon Dalin sluggishly followed your line of sight to look down at himself. He frowned the second it clicked that he wasn't dressed for the event. He guessed that those were his pajamas. <laughs> I deeply apologize, Michiko. I will need an additional moment before we can leave. I'm running late, it seems. As he shut the door, you were left there on his doorstep entirely at a loss. His bizarre behavior was unexplainable. At least for the second it took for your brain to completely process what had happened. It dawned on you that this was the first time you'd actually seen Baxter before noon. And how that might not be a random coincidence. He wasn't a morning person. Oh no. He's so cute though. Aw, oh, he could have he told us he wasn't a morning person. Suddenly, the door flung all the way open, nearly knocking you backwards. Baxter's back, and this time you got a full view. Baxter was indeed wearing only his pajamas, black and white PJs, of course. Excuse me, that was rather impolite. You couldn't tell by his tone of voice which incident he was even referring to, shutting the door in your face, or the way the situation was dragging on forever. It was hard to know. But Baxter moved aside enough that you could pass by. Why don't you come in? A part of you worried if this was a good idea or not. You decided to step forward anyway. You walked through an entryway and into the living room. Oh, it's quite cute in here. It's so cute, minus a dolphin. <laughs> you pause to take the space, unable to help yourself. After all those years trying to avoid this condo, you were actually inside. Honestly, you never thought that would happen. But as much as you wanted to explore, there were even more unexpected things taking precedence. Your attention returned to Baxter. You closed the door and followed behind. Baxter pinched the bridge of his nose between his thumb and forefinger as his feet dragged. Please to take a seat. I'm so sorry for not being prepared. I sent an alarm for an hour ago and I know I heard it go off. <sighs> Somehow, in a matter of moments, that hour disappeared and now you're here. And I have little doubt about your punctuality. He moved the hand up to rub his forehead with his palm as if to catch the memories lost inside. You didn't rush him, instead settling yourself in a chair. I don't know how this could have happened. It's... Baxter's words became too mumbled and faint to understand. That brought you, your gaze back to him directly. And you took- you got an eyeful of his exposed stomach. Baxter was in the process of taking his shirt off over his head, but in his groggy state, the material had got caught in- on his ear. He silently flushed. You had no idea how to act in this situation, especially since Baxter wasn't completely aware of what he was doing. Embarrassed, you hid your face in your hands and waited for it to be over. But you still peeked through your fingers when you realized it was worse, not knowing what was happening. Baxter readjusted his shirt after failing to get it off, working through the tiredness to conceptualize a plan B. Then he hazily met your eye. Baxter held for several heartbeats and then his brows bent up. Did something happen? Your flesh burned hotter, nodding you kept yourself hidden. Are you okay? What's wrong? You shook your head and the situation gradually dawned on Baxter. He glanced down at his wrinkled clothes. Oh. oh no, that's not correct. I'm sorry. I'm used to living with dorm mates. They don't care about that sort of behavior. I've lost my manners. I'll go change properly in my room. Please stay here. I'll be back in two shakes. And with that, the situation was out of your hands. You watched him fumble his way through the room. Baxter made it to... <laughs> Made it upstairs and slammed of a door, which sent the house rattling. The following dead silence only lasted a split second. Sorry! His voice rang up from where you assumed was his bedroom. He, his next words were even clearer. He must have opened the door to again to speak. I didn't even do that at all. I think I pulled the door too hard. <laughs> He's so like, oh shit, wait. I swear the noise was completely unintentional. He didn't add anything else after that. You remained where he left you in a rapidly growing state of disbelief. To put it nicely, Baxter was a total mess and somehow the universe deemed you worthy of having a front row seat. It was kind of funny to know he was not always so poised. The whole thing was hilarious. You felt bad about bothering him at a clearly bad time. This was That was extremely cute. Honestly, it's cute and funny. Despite it not being Baxter's ideal part of the day, he was still trying so hard to make it work. That consideration and intent meant a lot. And the bedhead, pajamas, and groggy silliness was an added bonus that you were going to treasure. After a few moment, minutes, the clumsy bumping around upstairs faded. A part of you considered the chances of whether or not he had fallen asleep somewhere, but the sound of careful footsteps soon banished that thought. 
Baxter returned downstairs and properly dressed as well. He dressed as well. He, he drifted his fingers along the buttons of his shirt, double checking that everything was in order. Hello. Here I am. Good morning. <laughs> You're pleasantly surprised to see him already. Hopeful, hopefully he was actually doing as well as he was trying to. Um, hi. I can't emphasize this enough. Thank you so much for your patience. I apologize for that unnecessary bump in your plans. Baxter graciously moved beyond his earlier antics. If you hadn't witnessed it firsthand, you probably wouldn't have believed it even happened. Though as you observed him more, you noted the signs. He hadn't erased all evidence of a few minutes ago, yet if you knew to look for it. Oh, uh, wait, what? A few minutes ago yet, if you knew to look for it. Okay. His usually pristine and deliberately put together outfit was pulled and tucked in the wrong places. There were even wrinkles. Baxter turned his head and attempted to suppress a yawn, and there was a dull edge of his entire demeanor. He hadn't quite reached his usual razor sharp wit yet. It was alright. You were still quite enjoyed you still quite enjoyed the soft, easygoing state of Baxter. He smiled reassuringly, so you're not a morning person. You'd be correct. He, he let his gaze fall away somewhere to the side, frowning. I am the furthest thing from being a morning person these days. Good to know, Night Owl. But then his smile slipped and you could see Baxter's guilt surfacing. I should admit directly that mornings are, as you might have surmised, a challenge. It wasn't always this I way. Swear. I swear the older I get, the more the early mornings become a chore. I got up at a dawn for school for years, but college allowed me to actively avoid morning classes altogether. Now I can't remember the last time I had an occasion to be out before 11 at the earliest. Baxter rubbed the back of his neck, his frustration with himself was palpable. That's okay, you don't have to feel bad for something like that. Nevertheless, it's trying to be entirely lost for a specific chunk of the day. I expected I would have a rough start, but I never thought I'd handle the occasion this poorly. I certainly would have made better choices if I knew this was the sight I'd be showing you. The intensity in his voice gradually lessened until the final part was delivered quietly. He couldn't even look at you as he muttered. Uh. But if you're still interested, I would be thrilled to have our charming cafe breakfast. It would be a shame. It would be a shame to miss out on the chance. Of course, I'm interested. You know, I'd, I like to. I like that. But if I'm driving, <laughs> uh, of course, I'm interested. A wave of relief smoothed over, out, smoothed out the worry from his brow. It was sweet and pulled a quiet, ch quiet chuckle from you. Baxter's feet scuffed over the ground as he followed you out the condo. He simply shut the door before walking to the street. Um. Did you forget to lock the door? <laughs> you couldn't believe he was about to leave the neighborhood like that. Well, with, with with normal Baxter, you couldn't believe it. It made perfect sense with morning Baxter. Baxter paused and his face scrunched up in confusion. You pointed at the condo. He followed the motion, peering over his shoulder. Uh. Good catch. Thank you. You waited by the car while he hurried back. From what you could observe, Baxter didn't need any more help locking the front, of the front door this time. Though he hesitantly glanced in your direction before he moved, and you gave him a thumbs up, Baxter rejoined you on the road. And while he might have been living in a daze, when Baxter was standing at the driver's side of his car, you could see his focus sharpen. This was a task that neither of you wished him to fail. He unlocked the vehicle and slid inside. He climbed to the other side. Baxter seemed to be in better control of himself by the second. His seatbelt clicked into place with perfect poise. When you were both ready, Baxter promptly brought up the, con brought up the directions to the cafe. Here we are. Dying contentedly, you leaned into your seat and soaked in the morning sun coming through the window. You were optimistic that the date was going to be great. <laughs> Even though, like, the morning half of it was kind of silly. The drive wasn't long at all, and no issues came along. It was smooth sailing. You hopped out, the, hopped out and the scents wafting from the cafe were enough to pull you towards a propped open front door. Once you were inside, the intermingled smells became easier to decipher. Chocolate, cinnamon, bacon, and eggs, and mostly... Excuse me, mostly especially coffee. There was something about the particular brew of coffee that immediately reminded you of your parents. This place is so pretty. It's so pretty. The two of them lo loved to have long early mornings in the kitchen with mugs of coffee between them on the counter. They might be doing that at home that very minute. Before you could tug on that thread of thought further, a waiter passed by carrying a sliced quiche. You breathe, breathe deeply, picking out the various ingredients before your eyes could confirm it. It looked impressively made. Baxter led you towards the showcases. There were even added baskets of bread and other treats there. Every inch of space was fully stocked with options. Clearly, coming early had its advantages. Whether you ate anything or not, the sight was delightful. There was a charm to how they presented the fresh pastries. That was the word he'd used when pitching the place. Charming. Baxter was right on the money there. It was a pleasant little cafe with a comfortably quiet atmosphere. Though it was a bit more formal than a typical coffee joint, you couldn't sit anywhere or order at the front. A member of the waitstaff needed a seat and 
serve you. Oh, that's fancy. He found that detail to be a Baxter thing. It was absolutely him to choose a sit-down restaurant even for a casual breakfast. A server came over and gestured you to follow her through the room. She brought you to a sh two, uh, two, she brought you to a sh shiny two-seater. Gosh, I can't read. Table and passed out the menus. Welcome, I'll bring some water. But if there's anything else you'd like to drink, I can put it in the order now. Or you can take some time to think about it. You'd be a lifesaver if you brought me a black coffee, please. Black coffee. Um, I'd like... Oh, hot chocolate. <laughs> but we're not, in, we're not in... We're not in winter, we're in summer. Milk, juice, co ice coffee, Americano, latte. I would like a frappe, please. Gotcha, get that right out. Just relax and browse the menu and you're welcome to take a peek at the front and see what big goods we have prepared today. She clicked her pen close and then left you two alone. Baxter sunk in his seat, slinging one arm over the back. His eyelids fell heavily closed, but his smile remained serenely in place. He's so cute. Thank you, Baxter, for, for, for being a big boy and waking up in the morning for me. <laughs> Because I do, I have like two friends that are night owls, or maybe like, I don't think about it. I think almost all of my friends are night owls. And only one is a morning bird, like I am. Because Tyler, Tyler, if he want, if he could, he would be a night owl. But sadly, <laughs> because he's with me, <laughs> he is forced to be a morning bird. And his job is also morning bird hours. So he's like, I guess he's a hybrid of morning and night. But anyway, now yeah, now that I think about it, I have plenty of night owls as friends. And whenever we have a hangout, I tend to like to do things super early. Just so we can have as much time together. Because <laughs> again, my love language is quality time. And as you get older, hanging out with your friends as adults is definitely hard. Um, you have to plan months in advance. And I try to at least hang out with my friends once a month. Or once every two months. And uh they they have to wake up early for me. 9 a.m. That's that's decent time, right? I'm not asking you to wake up at 7. But I always thank them. <laughs> I always thank them for waking up for me. But uh, anyway, this is where we're gonna start for today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.